Hi, in this video I'm going to show you how to run Ubuntu Linux in a virtual machine on a Windows 10 computer. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. First thing we're going to need to do is we're going to need to download this VirtualBox software from Oracle completely free and it's going to allow us to set up our virtual machine. Once we've downloaded this thing, we'll need to download an ISO image from Ubuntu for you know, Ubuntu Linux and then we'll set up a virtual machine to run Ubuntu Linux. Okay, so let's go ahead and download this thing. Click on the big blue button here. Okay, and that's going to take you to their download page. And we'll have some options here under VirtualBox binary section. Okay, I'm going to be installing this on a Windows machine. So I'll click this first link here. If you're doing this for Mac OS, then you'd want to click on the second link underneath here. Okay, but anyway, I'm doing this for Windows. Click on that. I'm given my save as window saver or I want. I've already downloaded it, so we don't have to wait and watch me do that. Okay, once I've gotten that executable, now I need to go get an image from, an ISO image from Ubuntu. Okay, so if I go to Ubuntu.com, click on the download section here. I want a version of desktop. Click on desktop. Okay, and I'm given a couple options here. I like the latest version of Ubuntu. So that's the one I'm interested in. Okay, by default, uh, the virtual machine software likes to use 32-bit versions of Linux. So let's choose that so we don't have to do any additional configuration on the virtual machine, make it easy as possible. Click download. Okay, we're given this big screen. I've already donated. So I'm gonna say not now, take me to the download screen. Once I do that, my download will begin automatically. Save the ISO image wherever you want. Okay, now we've got both files that we need. Okay. Okay, so once you finish downloading that, go ahead and run the executable. You're going to be presented with a wizard. Just go ahead and choose, you know, next, 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 next. All the defaults are just fine. Okay. Once you've once you've installed that, go ahead and start up the virtual box manager. Now we have to create a brand new um, virtual machine. Okay. So if we click on new, we can give it a name. And for this, we're going to call it Ubuntu. Okay. It is Linux. It's going to be Ubuntu 32 bit. Okay. Click next and we want to specify a memory size the more memory the better but you know you're limited to how much memory your machine has so for me I'll just set this to oh 4096 okay my machine has a total of of 8 gigs I'll set my virtual machine up to be able to use um, 4 gigs click next let's go ahead and create a virtual hard disk now we just leave this the default okay Create and the virtual box disk image is fine. Leave that. And then we'll go ahead and allow this to be dynamically allocated. That'll be fine too. Next. Okay. Um, okay. We can just go ahead and leave this. We already set that. We'll go ahead and click create. Okay. And now we've got a virtual machine set up. Okay, now that we have our virtual machine built, let's go ahead and select it and click start. Okay, and that'll start booting up our machine. We're gonna be prompted with a select start disk. Let's go ahead and just use the default for right now. Okay. All right, we can close this little window up here, this little mini window up here. Now what's gonna happen is it's gonna say fatal, no bootable medium found, system halted. Well, yeah, we haven't installed an operating system yet. Right, so we need to do that now. This is just like if you booted up a regular computer and you didn't have an OS installed. So what we're gonna need to do now is take that ISO image that we downloaded from Ubuntu and put that into our virtual um, CD-ROM drive, right? So the second icon here looks like a CD is what we're gonna use. So if we right click on that, okay, that allows us to choose a disk image. So click choose disk image and then point to the Ubuntu image that you just downloaded. In my case, I had downloaded 
I386, which is the 32-bit version. Select that, click open. Okay. And now what I want to do is I want to reboot my virtual machine. Okay. So let's go ahead and select reset. Okay. Yes, I really do want to do it. Okay. And then that's going to reboot the machine. But now we're booting off of that virtual CD-ROM, that ISO image that we downloaded from Ubuntu. And that should bring us to the installation screen. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. I know what the, we can just go ahead and click that. Just annoying uh, notification message letting us know that the mouse works uh, in this window. Thank you very much. Okay, so the image finished loading up and now we are in the Ubuntu installer. So what I want, I speak English, so I'm going to leave that where it is. And I want to actually install the Ubuntu operating system in this virtual machine. So I'll click the install Ubuntu option. And that's going to take us through the installer. Okay. Uh, let's go ahead and download updates while installing. I'll go ahead and click that. I'm not interested in any third party software. So once we've done that, let's go ahead and click continue. Make sure you have connection to the internet. Okay. Um, so next I'm prompted with this next option. Screen, erase disk and install Ubuntu. That's totally fine. This is a virtual disk. This isn't going to delete my windows or anything like that. This is a virtual disk inside this virtual machine. It's like a separate computer. Okay. Not interested in uh, encrypting anything not interested in LVM so let's go ahead and click install now okay so the next screen what's my time zone Los Angeles that's where I'm at I'm in that time zone so we'll click continue all right so keyboard layout English hit continue that's what I want Okay, so now I have to put in my name, you know, whatever name I want. Hank's Delica. Right, that's going to make my computer's name in this virtual machine, Hank Virtual Box, totally fine. Username, Hank. Choose whatever password you want. Right, but I want to log in automatically, right, because this is a virtual machine. The only time this operating system is going to be running, anytime I'm going to be using Ubuntu, is after I've logged into my Windows 10 machine. So I don't need a second password yet again, so I'm just going to say log in automatically. Hit continue. Yeah, my password's weak. Who cares? I'm not going to use it very much anyway. Okay. So now it's going to start its install stuff. So I'll pause the video right here, and I'll be right back when it's finished. Okay. Now that we've got Ubuntu installed and running in our virtual machine, let's uh, set this up so we can launch a terminal window and also have a text editor so we can write some source code and do some command line compiling. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to go ahead and click on this little guy right here, this finder type thing, and uh, it's going to allow us to search for different applications. Okay, so <clears throat> I want to have text editor, so I'll type text in there, and then that'll bring up the text editor, a bunch of options, and I'll select the text editor, okay, and that's going to open up, you know, gedit, which comes with uh, Ubuntu, okay, on the icon over here, I want to right click on that and say, let's lock to launcher, okay, then I can close this. And next time I want to have a text editor or a writing code or whatever, it's going to be waiting for me right there. Okay, so let's repeat this process for terminal, right? Because we're going to be writing command line programs, and so we're going to need a command line. So if terminal doesn't automatically populate for you like it did for me right there, then you can just type in terminal here to search for that. Click on that guy. And that'll launch the terminal. Okay, and then I want to lock that to my taskbar also, or to my launcher. Okay, and now 
I have a command line and I can do all the command line-y kind of stuff. Okay. So, uh, let me show you really quick just how you know, we can um, write a quick little program, a little hello world program in C. Um, you know, doing everything, doing our compiling from the command line. Okay. So, let me save this uh, new text file. Okay, so save as, save it to the desktop. I'm just going to name this uh, hello.c. It's just going to be a little hello world program. Okay, and I want my line encoding to be Windows. So that way, um, on a Windows computer, all the lines are going to look normal. Okay, let me just change it to that. You'll see what I mean. I mean, um, Windows and Unix systems have different new line characters, right? So if I don't set this for Windows, if you open up this text file on a Windows machine, it's going to do some weird stuff, okay? But anyway, so let's go ahead and write a little Hello World program here, okay? So I'm going to need standardio.h so I can have access to printf. Okay, this is going to be it main. Oops. All right, we want to return zero. Okay, and print f. Hello, world. Okay. Okay, and that should be everything that we need. So. I'll Hit Control S to save, or you can click you know, the save button there. Now I need to go ahead and compile this thing. Okay, we're going to be doing command line compiling. Okay, um, to get this to work, we're not going to use an IDE um, in this class. And you'll find out why as we go forward. But anyway, if I do ls at this command line now, it'll show me all the files that are on my desktop. If I was to move this out of the way, you know, there's hello.c on the desktop. Okay, but we're going to do this from the command line. Okay, so oops. Okay, a little slow version machines are a little bit a little bit slow depending on the speed of your overall machine. Anyway, so to to compile this program from the command line, GCC is the program. It's the name of the compiler program. Uh, for this, for the uh, second argument, I specify the name of the file that I want to compile. And then dash O allows me to specify the name of the executable that gets created. And I'll just call it uh, hello. And then hit enter. Okay. Now if everything goes right, everything works great, I don't see any error messages, my compile is successful. Type ls, that lists all the contents of the directory. Now we see a new file here created hello. And that's our actual executable program. So if I do this, run it, I have my hello world program. Okay. All right. Okay. So what just happened there? Notice how I typed fo dot forward slash hello and the low program ran, the low world program ran. Now I saw hello world, but if I type just hello, I got this other output. The program hello cannot be found in the following packages, blah, 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 blah. What does that mean? Well, it means that with command line compiling, we have to specify what directory, when we're working with the command line, we have to specify what directory the, the executable is in that we want to run, right? And if I say, period forward slash low, that's saying that I want to run the hello program that's located in the current directory. Okay, dot means this directory. Okay, forward slash is a separator between directory names and executable names. We'll get into more, more into that later in a later video. And then hello is the name of the program, right? So if I want to see the contents of the current directory that I'm in, ls will show me. I've got hello, I've got hello.c, hello.c is the source code file, hello is the executable, hello.c tilde is backup, right? Automatic backup of hello.c. 
Now I want to run this thing. I want to say, okay, I want to run hello, which is in the current directory. Okay, and I have this uh, path separator forward slash, and then I type the name of the program that I want to run. Hit enter, and there we go, hello world. Okay, so we covered a lot of stuff in this video. Um, I showed you how to find uh, the image to download for Ubuntu. I showed you the software, where to go to get the VirtualBox software, how to install it, how to get Ubuntu running under a uh, virtual machine. And finally, I showed you how to set up terminal and text edit, or gedit, the text editor for um, compiling and running a simple Hello World program. Okay, that brings this video to a close. As usual, if you have any questions, feel free to email me or stop by my office hours. Okay, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.